Python vectorize is not just a way of making things faster. It's also a way of thinking. Rather than thinking in loops and element-wise access to routines, we can think in terms of vectors and arrays and doing things on the entire array. And that's what this lesson is about. Let's start with the dot product again. The dot product is of two vectors, is the sum of the product of the elements. So I take um, the first element of x, the first element of y, I multiply it, I do the same thing for the second and so on and so on, and then I add them all up. Now, this can actually be expressed in a couple of patterns. So we could write, for example, this as a Python code. I have a loop over all the elements, and I wanted to make this as generic as possible, so I, um, yeah, anyway, um, have a loop over all the elements here. Okay. I can also express this as a map. Who knows what a map is? All right, what does a map do? A map applies an operation to each element. In Python, maps are expressed through list comprehension. Who has used list comprehension last week? Good. So here's my list comprehension. I'm um, multiplying v of i, w of i, for i in range length of v. All right. And this gives me the map vw. So this is just the product of the elements. Now I have the product of the elements. I still need to sum them all up. And that is generally referred to as a reduction. So we can now take our map, sum them all up, and do a reduction. Now, here this seems like a kind of silly example. But these are typical patterns. These are patterns that are um, also available as parallel patterns in many libraries. So it's good to get used to the terminology and the ideas. All right, so how would I do this in NumPy? Well, I can do map reduce. Um, not, actually, map reduce has existed before Google. The idea of combining map and reduction goes a long way back. Um, but anyway, I can do my map in, with NumPy just writing v times w. And here I'm actually applying a ufunc. The ufunc mul, which multiplies element-wise to NumPy arrays. The reduction here I can just do um, with the sum. So here again I did the map and the reduction. However, this is such a common pattern that NumPy has um, a function for that, the dot product, um, which can apply to vectors or matrices and so on. And um, this is actually the fastest version of the code. By the way, since Python 3.6, you can also write this as um, v at w. One of the, no, actually the first um, PEP that came from numeric computing and made it into general Python. So Python has a matrix multiplication operator. So ufuncs are um, functions that act on one or more than one array of the same shape or at least they need to be broadcastable, and return a vector of the same shape. Um, so, as I said, when we multiplied those two, we executed the mu fung mul, which you can actually define in any way you want, but um, it's usually a good idea to stick with it. Dot 
does not follow this. The dot product actually takes elements of one shape, and in the two of in the case of two um, vectors, it actually returns a number, which is obviously not of the same shape as the vector. These are then called generalized u-funks. So generalized u-funks can take um, arrays of different shape and um, apply or uh, return an element of a different shape. So we have map and reduction as two typical patterns. Another typical pattern is a stencil. Stencils um, combine elements of the neighborhood. So here's an example of a two-dimensional stencil um, on a Cartesian grid. And we calculate here in this case the new value of the central cell by adding up the values of the surrounding cells and dividing it by four. So we're basically taking the average. The center cell will be the average of the outer cells. If you have a copy of the array, so if your input array, um, or if your output array is a copy of your input array, you can apply the entire stencil in parallel for each element. Um, it's a very common pattern, for example, um, for solving Navier-Stokes equations in fluid dynamics, you can use a stencil for a solution. So let's look at an example. Um, I'm creating a 10 by 10 array of random numbers here. And I set the boundaries to 0 and 1. So here I take the left column, set it to 0, and the right column I set to 1. NumPy, just like, uh, num, uh, like Python lists, supports wraparound indices. So minus 1 is the first element. If I wanted to apply this stencil, I could do an explicit loop, like I do here. I go over all the elements, i and j, um, and I take a quarter, add the elements, and um, yeah, take basically the average. This gives my boundary conditions. So I have periodic boundary conditions along one axis and um, fixed boundary conditions along the other axis. So I'm basically um, doing a cylinder. So that's our shape. If we had periodic boundary conditions in both directions, we would get a donut. Um, much harder to do with a sheet of paper. All right, so if we apply this and plot it, then this was our original vector. Um, this is our second iteration, uh, our first iteration. And this is the difference between the two vectors. And here I did the um, sum of the differences, and here it's 2.963, arbitrary. Mm, yeah. To repeat this, actually we have now to make a copy of B, um, assign it to A, and then go on. Otherwise, if you don't make a copy, it um, does weird things. This would be with an explicit loop. But as I just said, this is about thinking in a vectorized way. So we don't want to use explicit loops. We want to apply this to all the elements at once. And we can do that. And that's why we introduced NumPy role to you. Um, we can actually take our array A, shift it, and skip our loop. This 
line does the same thing as our nested loop. Um, it shifts A along the two axes, and here in the end I also reset my boundary conditions. So from a thinking way, what I'm actually doing is I start with my original array, and then I shift it a little bit to the side, and up, and also I have one over there, and one down. And then I'm adding those. And that generates exactly the same thing. Just to make it clear, there is actually a programming exercise to this. We want you to um, write a program as part of the notebook that actually um, does this over multiple iterations so that you can see that it converges before we get to the second programming exercise. So just that when you go through the notebook, you know that there are actually two exercises, two longer exercises in this notebook. Because the second one comes now. Who has an idea what the Mandelbrot set looks like? Okay, you will all after this exercise. Um, the Mandelbrot set is a fractal, and um, it is the set of points in the complex plane for which this series um, does not diverge, so never goes to infinity. The series diverges if for any um, zi, the absolute value of it is larger than two. So if you ever have that the uh, magnitude of z becomes larger than two, you know that it diverges. You don't even have to continue trying. This leads to the so-called escape time algorithm of calculating the Mandelbrot set, where we do this for every point in the complex plane at least that part that we want to deal with. And um, here is the algorithm. And the beautiful thing is that Python knows about complex numbers. Even if it was obviously done by engineers and they call the square root of minus one j and not i as they should. Um, but otherwise, it actually deals with complex numbers quite nicely. So. Um, this is our series. We do that in a loop. And this loop will actually remain. This is not the loop that you're supposed to get rid of. And so here we have the square plus this constant. We check if it's larger than 2. If yes, then we return the iteration at which this happens. And from that, you can generate pretty pictures. And that's part of your job. Now. You shouldn't have more than this one loop in your solution. This is the only allowed loop, and it's already in the notebook. The notebook is called Think Vector. We're done with the lecture. <laughs>